Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, I just finished up everything, first cutting. So right here is the last of what I just brought in straw wise. And uh, this last bit of straw I got up was about, uh, I didn't look at the counter, but it had to be Yesterday we stopped at 1250 and did 120 more today. So it'd be uh, 1370. Um, there's some more of the same straw on those two wagons there. I've got these in here and I'm stacking them as high as I can reach with my John Deere tractor, just trying not to take up as much room as possible. But uh, here's all the first cutting hay, well, it's not all of it that I've done sold quite a, quite a few loads out of that, but it's three deep. Um, and 11 stacks long and uh, nine high. Then I've got some more over here beside the 4066R. And as you can probably tell by my voice, I'm tired. I'm wore out um, between doing this and then everything else that I try to do. And then, oh, not going to bed when I should, but uh, just tired. Anyway, I'm glad first cutting is over and uh, real pleased with everything. This isn't all the straw either. This. Uh, a lot of it has done been sold and gone, and then there's about 600, no, yeah, 600 bales, uh, I believe exactly, down there in our straw barn. Um, the new Holland skid steer broke down on me the other day. It was leaking really bad, so I had to get the cat up here to take over with the grapple on it because obviously there's a lot of stuff that had to be moved up here. Anyway, it's kind of an update on first cut. Um, done a bunch of round bales also. I know y'all seen that in some of the videos. About 400 round bales. But anyway, I've got a third function kit I'm going to install on the 5711. And uh, that's what I plan on showing in this video. So stick in here and we'll see how that goes. Hey everyone, how's it going? So I'm here in the shop with uh, Dorsey, shop manager. Hey. And uh, we're going to show y'all how to put a third function on a FL series loader on a Massey Ferguson tractor. And this is an FL 3819. I'm assuming that most of these FL series third functions are gonna be the same. I don't know that for sure, but I'm not sure what that was all about, sorry. Um, but yeah, we're gonna put one on today. I've never done this before, so I'm gonna be learning as we do it. Um, one thing I just did is I put a jack stand under it to hold the loader up off the floor. And then I went over here to the loader valve and I have completely made sure there is absolutely no pressure in the lines by having doing this with the tractor off. So that's kind of important because you don't want to be taking lines apart with pressure on them. So you don't want this loader off the ground or being supported by the cylinders in any way. Um, I'm not sure that it would be a big deal if those cylinders were holding weight, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't risk it. I would just go ahead and put something under it. You could do it with the loader all the way down, but you're gonna to have to be bending over to work on it. So I put a stand under it so I could stand up because everything is going under this cover right here. And and then mounted, there's a piece that got, has to be mounted here. So uh, first thing I do is take these torques out. I probably won't even show it. There's four of them, it's simple. Just Torx head screwdriver or ratchet socket with Torx in it. Take that off. Here's the kit. 
comes with some directions. They aren't the greatest directions in the world, but uh, there they are. If you want to pause that, if you need to read them, hopefully you can see them. There's not a lot of stuff in this kit. You have this valve, and you have two hoses, and you have some bolts. I mean, that's that's all. The Massey guy said it would take like six hours to put it on. There ain't no way. So. Okay, so we're back, and... <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> All right, got me an oil pan under here because it's going to lose a little bit of oil. But it takes a seven eighths wrench here. Will you quit putting that in the way? And an inch and a sixteenth here on these two, and then I think these bottom two are also uh, seven eighths. So I got the wrenches. There. Oh yeah, there's nowhere to lay your tools on this loader anywhere they just fall off so you didn't need a cart and I'd already loosened these two also but they're not real that really that tight you can lay something like right there but that's it okay so I'll take these two loose you got two on the right side and four on the left side but you're, you're basically doing away with this this gets replaced by the valve So you take these two off right here. And I just noticed that they're crossed right here. So I gotta make sure they go back the same way. They're both blue. This one goes to the top of the cylinder and it hooks to the, here. What? The oil, yeah, there's oil coming out. Dorsey's trying to teach me how to film. <laughs> okay, so we're going to unhook these two, obviously. There. Now, you got to take these two Allens loose because that's what holds this block on. There's one here and there's one down here, okay? Take those loose. Take these four right here loose. And then the new valve is going to mount right where that thing is. So I'm going to put you up here. coming out. They say y'all are all coming out. They know, son. They know. It's not a lot of oil, it's just some oil. Look. Okay. It is quite a bit of oil. <laughs> I'm gonna get a rag and my other wrench. It should stop, son. Maybe, hopefully. I don't know, it may drain the whole cylinder out there. Stop. Oh, it's coming out from from the uh, valve side. Alright. So we'll take these loose. Looks like yellow and red. You got a yellow and a red on the top here. Pay attention to this. <laughs> move the yellow one to be able to get to the red one. I did not take, I've got the Allen screws that hold this thing on there loose, but I do not have it, have them out yet because I wanted it to hold them while I broke these lines loose. So I noticed these blue ones on the bottom here are also crossed right here. And the, the, the one towards the front of the tractor goes to the top of the, the uh, tilt cylinder. Just as this one are crossed, then the one that hooked to the front went to the top of that tilt cylinder. Oh, Dad, a chicken on that side. Yeah, I missed my pan a little bit. Don't freak out on me like that, son. 
Oh, me. Now, where'd that hose go? Oh, it fell down. I see. That's one that's leaking all the oil. All right. So I got those four hoses. Now I got two more hoses to get loose. It's covered the whole pan. Don't touch that. I've got it jammed in there so it won't leak anymore. If you knock it out of there, it'll fall down and start leaking again. Now these lines are a, I think they're a metric fitting and they, uh, they have an inverted taper and uh, there's no o-ring or anything like that so you don't have to worry about the o-rings it's a taper taper seal so i'm unhooking the last line Get some chicken feed or something to get off this stuff. You can. Okay. Put it in oil dry is what he's talking about. Chicken feed. <laughs> oh, me. I'm going to drop one of these wrenches because I ain't know where to set them. Just don't get it in the in the pan, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna take those two Allen screws out. So we'll do that. That's all that holds this thing in there, as best I can tell. Yep, because it comes out. Now they sent new Allen uh, bolts because I think they're a different size. And this thing's got a lot of oil in it. Drain the oil out of it. So I'm gonna put it on the workbench. All right, so here's your valve, and it goes on, it goes in here just like this, best I can tell. Oops. You get the holes lined up, put the bolts in it. Big. What the world? Apparently. All right, you're gonna have to use the bolts that came out of the other thing because these bolts they sent, they're too big. I got everything. All right, well, they did send the right size bolt. I'm sorry. Apparently, those bolts were for something else. So these go in here like this. Yeah, I know it. 
these hoses. Don't want to stay up here all the way. So I'll get this mounted in here. Then I'll start hooking the hoses back up. They told me, you know, one thing you had to do is get all the wiring in the, up into the tractor and all that stuff. That's not true. All the wiring's already on this thing. So, it's really simple. The wire's right here that you need to hook to it. You just plug it in to the solenoid. Go at it. We'll take a quick glance at how they have their hoses routed, which isn't going to be too hard. I remember these were crossed over here. So we're going to cross them back just like they were. That's a plenty on that, son. You don't need any more. He's gonna put a whole 50 pound bag of oil dry on one little spot. Okay. Seven eighths wrench, just put these back on, snug them back up. No O-rings, like I said. Tapered seal. Ooh, it's hot and muggy in here. Sweating like a pig. I'm cold. You're cold? What? Crazy thing. All right. Now, I gotta hook these two bottom lines up. I remember they were crossed also. Make you cold? He's drinking some water. He says it's making him cold. No. Yeah, I know it's cold. They are paying attention. <laughs> I 
I'll get these good and snug because I don't want them leaking on me. Nah. Where's my old can? I'm assuming these, all these fittings came tightened, but I'm not sure about that. I might already check them. Let's see if this wrench will fill. That one's tight, that one's tight. 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 Surely, if most of them are tight, all of them are tight. Can't get on that one. Huh? No, but I'm good. Well, it looks loose as it could be, and you know, every time I try to turn it with my fingers, it's tight. Anyway, I got it. All right, now that's good and tight. Now I got to hook these two back up. Now remember the red went in the back, and the yellow went towards the front. No, no. Mm. Tight fit. Fingers so oily, I can't turn it my, with my fingers. I think this kit cost about fifteen hundred dollars. It used to cost about six hundred dollars. Of course, everything's went up. So I ordered or I bought it with the tractor, so I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think that's what, what it was. Must be something a little bit different here because I can't get the wrench in there to tighten it. There we go, I got it. Okay, so. Now we'll hook up Mr. Yellow. And then that'll be all of the original hoses that I had unhooked. And then I got to put two new hoses on that go to the third function.
Okay. Now. Do we need to put any, you know, like can you? No. All right. Let me get a rag. My hands are all oily. My face is all sweaty. <laughs> okay. So, here you go. Here's your third function piece of this. They actually already mounted the plate on there. And the hoses go. Let's see if y'all can see what I'm doing over here. They go like this. And then the hoses just go up here and connect to that block. This is going to be like the easiest install ever. Well, not really. <laughs> so the blue goes towards the front. Got to mount this. Yeah. Quit messing with my stuff. Got to mount this thing over here on the side somewhere. I just looked at where it went. I have to look again. Apparently, I right, go right here. It goes right there. Yeah. I'll show you here. Down here, they go. It lines up right there. It looks yeah. like you're gonna have to have. Oh, there's this thing is threaded. So this is where the, the big Allen bolt things go. Big Allen bolts that I was trying to use over there. That's where these go. <coughs> So I'm gonna install this thing. Which is gonna be pretty simple. So what do you, do you need to do that? Just need you to hold on for a minute. So this, you use these Allens with the thread locker on them best I can tell and they go through these holes on the boom and the cast part of the boom down here yep and it takes an eight millimeter uh, allen wrench those other allens were six millimeter Now I've got uh, something for your hoses to go through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and route them through it and up to the place that they go. I may go ahead and just mount this piece on here. I'm holding the hose for you guys. You just hold them right there, thank you. I'm gonna get the bolts to hold those that, that on. And they have lock nuts. Where'd that go, son? Drop one of the nuts, of course. 
Or did I drop two nuts? Nah, just one. Well, I can't get my hand up there. It's kind of tight right here to get your hand in, but it is possible. Put this one in. So I'm not going to tighten these yet. I'm just going to go ahead and hook my hoses up. So let me have my, let me see where these hoses go. They come up, they come up right here. And, and then over, over to the valve. And they've got Blue hooking to the front, red hooking to the back. So I'm gonna hook those up now. Then I'll tighten up my bolts. I'll tighten up the bolts that hold the the hydraulic connectors on, which I'm going to put adapters on to switch them to skid steer flat face. I figured it easier to do that to put the adapters on on the T5. It's basically the same thing as the T5 loader. I like using the adapters because you can snap the adapters off those Pioneer fittings and let the pressure off. It's a whole lot easier. So the red goes into the back. Okay. I gotta find my wrench. This may be a little tough in here, it's a little tight. be a little easier probably if you took that metal back and plate off and you could take it off with a couple more screws out but I didn't take it off yeah you can take it off I just didn't save a little time but maybe not <laughs> tight. Hook the blue one up right here. You know, I hope to go back. I know, buddy. Mm -hmm. So I got all the hoses hooked up now. So what I'm going to do now is tighten up these bolts on the on the coupler bracket, which is right here. Tighten these bolts and then I'm going to pressurize all of it and test it for leaks, which is just basically crank the tractor up and turn on the, well first we'll move the, the loader, make sure it operates correctly and then we'll pressurize the third function by holding in the button. There is a wire right here you got to plug in. The blue and the white plugs in right here. See, if y'all can see it right there, plugs in right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna tighten these bolts and then we'll test it. And that's all there is left. Okay, so we got the engine running. We're getting ready to do a field test and Dorsey's gonna operate the tractor for us. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is he's already raised it up, but we're gonna roll it all the way over, roll it all the way back and check for leaks. So roll it over. There you go. 
It's going to roll it all the way over. Now, when it dropped down, he didn't do that. That is a kind of a design flaw in the loader. All right, now roll it all the way back. When the loader bottoms out all the way down, it kind of puts it in the bind and forces it to go down when the loader suspension is activated. All right, hold still. All right, he's rolled it all the way back. Let it down. Down. Now stop, and we'll check for leaks. We'll check for leaks. We're going to look in here. I don't see anything leaking. Everything looks good. A little oil on that, but I think that's from when it was coming out earlier, but I just don't see anything major going on. All right, now we're going to test the third function where you got to hold the button in. So first thing, I want you to roll it over just a little bit. Roll it over. All right, now stop. Now hold in the button and roll it over. Now what it's doing right now is it's putting pressure to one of those new lines that we just put on. Okay, now stop. All right, now hold the button in and roll it back. All right, now he's putting pressure to the opposite line. This is called a diverter system. What it does is it just diverts the oil. Okay, stop. It diverts the oil from the tilt cylinders to the third function when you hold in the button and then you actuate the lever. That's how it works. It does, it's not a live third function where there's another set of hoses that go all the way to the tractor and has its own electronic valve and all that good stuff like some of them, like my John Deere has all that. This one is just called a diverter system and that's what that valve does is diverts the oil. Cut the engine off, buddy. So that valve just diverts the oil that switch on the stick up there actuates this solenoid by, via these wires right here. And uh, that's how it, how it works. Now, I've got one more thing I gotta do. I've got a plug right here that I'd already rigged up and I'm gonna plug into it and I'm gonna run the wires out here with these hoses. And that's where my tie grabber will tie, will hook up for the fourth function, which I actually, to operate those wires, I, I talked about this before when I done it, but what happened, what I did was, is this switch right here will actuate the fourth function. So you got a button for the third function, then you'll be able to flip the switch and then hold the button in and move it and it'll activate the fourth function. And the fourth function solenoid valve is on the tie grabber and that's how that works. So you push this in right here uh -huh. and that's how it's doing the fourth function. That's right. So this switch used to have the soft drive on it, which is the loader suspension, which makes the tractor ride better when you're driving with a bell or, or with attachment down the road. I just leave it on all the time, basically, because it makes the tractor ride better. Because the loader will have some give in it, and it just floats along. Well, I took, took it off of that switch, and I moved it to this switch right here, and I, I rewired it all. So... Now, I can use that plug to operate the fourth function, and it will go to that switch. So that's how I did that. Well, I mean, I explained that in more detail in a future, in a, in a past video. Yeah. So, um, I'll put a link to it if I can remember which one it was. But anyway, all this is working. We're going to go do a, uh, a test on, with it here in a little bit. I got to work on my round baler some first. I got to do some greasing and oiling and checking on that thing, make sure it's ready to go, and then we can do a grapple test. So we'll see y'all there. All right, so I just come up here and I just hooked something to this thing for the very first time. I just went ahead and hooked it to the tie grabber because I want to make sure that the fourth function works also. The fourth function solenoid valve is mounted on the tie grabber right here. So it's all self-contained. It just needs 12 volts. So that's what this extra wire I put on here was for. Um, I mean, it's controlled by the what used to be the soft drive switch on the on the uh, joystick. So 
everything's hooked up. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to now. So I'll put y'all here so you can see maybe. Now I'm going to operate, first I'm going to operate the grabbers. All right, so first thing I notice is it's backwards. And that's going to be really easy to switch, to change. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll turn this back off and I'll relieve the pressure. But it is working, it's just backwards. But it's going to be really easy to switch. All I have to do is put one. All I have to do is put, take where I, I use these adapters. They're exactly the same on one end, so I'll just switch them. This one goes over here, and this one goes over here, and hook them back up. Perfect, now they should be correct. So, y'all can get in the tractor with me this time. I'll try it again, find the key. So we'll raise it up. I want to try it. All right, it's working correctly now. Squeeze arm, I don't know if y'all can see it, squeeze arm, squeeze arm's coming in and hooks go down. Hooks up, squeeze arm out. All right, now we're gonna try the fourth function, which is this, this switch here. We'll switch it. Now it should move the tie arm. So here it goes. It worked, no problem. So the tie grabber is now able to be used on the 5711. So now that I know that it works, I'm just gonna take it back off. I wanted y'all to see the fruits of the labor here. And I got grease all over my arm. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching the video install on the third function um, on this tractor. Um, you know, if you have more questions about how I did the fourth function, I do have a video that kind of showed a little bit about that. And uh, I think I put a card to that up at the beginning of the video. So you can go back and click on that card at the beginning and uh, maybe learn enough to get that done if not if you have any questions you can uh, comment but anyway hope you all enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up comment subscribe we'll talk to y'all later